Hello, today I'm going to be talking about matrix factorization and how it's going to eventually help us do a very important machine learning technique called principal component analysis. Now you're probably all familiar with uh, factorization uh, from factoring polynomials, so I'm going to start with that. Um, so in this example, I'm uh, generating some random x values and some noise, and uh, then the y values are going to be a function of those x values. And then later when I'm making my data and plotting, I'm just going to add a little bit of noise there. And so here we have a third degree uh, polynomial expression, right? I can see y equals negative x to the third. And uh, you might want to ask, well, what is this picture going to look like when I plot it? And one of the prominent features of a plot is where does it cross um, the x-axis, right? Where does y equal zero? This is a third degree polynomial, so you might test that uh, well, it certainly could cross the x-axis at uh, three points. So where are those three points? Well, it's a little, I could plot it in C, but if we rewrite the expression, it'll be a little bit easier, right? If I write it this way, if I write it as 4 minus x times 2 minus x minus 1 minus x, um, we, we can crunch the numbers, and it turns out this expression here uh, it comes out mathematically the exact same here, right? So I haven't changed anything. Uh, oh, excuse me. There, I haven't changed anything. But if I write it this way, as a multiplication of these multiple factors, um, I can see something, right? I can see that when x is 4, the whole thing goes to 0. When x is 2, the whole thing goes to 0. When x is 1, the whole thing goes to 0, right? So it's a very useful um, uh, strategy. I'm decomposing the polynomial into these parts or factors. And so when I run this and then actually do the plotting, sure enough, I can see that uh, that it's at those points I said, right? It crosses zero at, at one, about at two, and then about at four. So this idea of factoring polynomials, right, as kind of the multiplication of parts, also applies to matrices. Here, when we do that, we can see things like when does it cross an axis. Um, factoring a matrix is going to tell us other interesting things about, about the matrix. So this, this idea of factoring or decomposition, right, is kind of another word for it. Um, uh, there's lots of different factorizations you can do of matrices. And the one I'm going to teach you here is, is called singular value decomposition, right? We can break a matrix into the multiplication of a few parts. And the matrix we want to do this decomposition on is the variance matrix, the covariance matrix. If I can decompose that, I can say interesting things about the covariance. Okay, so here I have the same example uh, from last time. Let me just take a peek at it. Where I have, uh, well, there's actually a lot of data. I'll just show it all for starters. I have all this data that's about um, different rectangles that have been measured, right? The measurements have been taken in both inches and centimeters. Um, so there's some redundancy there, right? Even though the columns aren't identical, right? They're, they're very related, um, modulo some noise that I add at the end. And then the border of the rectangles is of call also, of course, very uh, redundant, right? I mean, if I know the side and the height, of course, I know what the border is, right? So I had this data from before. And, uh, and last time, we saw that we could compute if we wanted to uh, a correlation matrix, right? And we can see that we get a correlation of one when they're identical, um, you know, closer to one when there's a strong correlation. Um, and we also saw the covariance matrix, um, which was maybe less intuitive to look at at this point, right? Because we were kind of not really normalized in any way. Um, but this matrix here, if we can take a decomposition of it, a singular value decomposition, um, it's trying to tell us some interesting things. Um, about that matrix. So for now, I'm just going to do the decomposition and we're going to talk later about what it actually tells us. Okay, so let me, let me, let me put this in a variable like so. So I have that covariance matrix. And, uh, and the, the function we can use for this is numpy.linearalgebra.singular value decomposition. And I'm going to pass in my matrix, right? I could, I could, uh, you know, pull out the NumPy array, but it's smart enough to figure out how to do that on its own. And uh, and that's going to return something. And let's just go take a look at the documentation. What's happening here? So what this is doing, 
right? I look at the return value. It's returning these three things, U, S, and VH. And the notes up here, right? This is the interesting part right here is it's telling us, it's telling us what it's decomposing it to. It's, it's decomposing it to these three parts, U, S, and H. And if you multiply U, S, U by S element wise, and then this symbol here is a dot product, right? If I take that and then I do a dot product with VH, then I should be able to get back to my um, original matrix, right? So we aren't worrying too much about what is in these three parts. Um, we just want to find out what they are and then show that indeed the factorization worked, right? I can multiply them back together and get what, what I originally wanted, right? So I have U, S, and VH. Um, so that really means it's returning a tuple of, of those three things, right? And um, and rather than having a tuple of those three things, I can just say U, S, and V, H like this. U, S, and V, H. And it will automatically unpack those tuples into those three parts, right? So I'm gonna run that. And maybe let me take a look at these. So there's my U, which is a matrix. Um, it's a matrix that's five by five. I have S, which is a vector, right? Size five. And then I have VH, take a peek at VH, which should also be a five by five vector, right? And so if this is a, if this is a decomposition, what that really means is that, what does it mean? It means that the covariance is what? It should be, should be U times S, and then dot product VH. Right, so I'm going to use this in both ways just so that we uh, get comfortable with that. So, so maybe I'll start like this. I'll say um, uh, u times s dot vh, and I get this matrix. And ideally, right, this should be the same as the covariance matrix, right? So these values down here ought to look as the same as the original. Um, I can see at least briefly it is, right? I have 157 in the top left. Uh, maybe what I'll do to just make it a little bit more clear is I'll put it inside of a data frame, like so. <clears throat> and um, just to really line it up, I'm going to use the same columns and index as before, right? So I'll say uh, columns equals covariance dot columns, index equals covariance dot index. I guess those are the same, right? But I can see that I was able to reconstruct. I was able to. Uh, uh, maybe let me just put this in a separate variable. I'm going to call this the reconstructed equals that. Okay, view it. Right, I was able to break this covariance matrix into these three parts and then multiply them back together in this way to reproduce exactly the same, same matrix. Right, let me just clean this up a little bit. Right, I can actually, um, that's another way to do the dot product that they've added in recent Python versions. And I get exactly exactly the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some practice with that and then we'll talk, come back and we'll talk about um, the interesting parts of this and in particular the S and the VH hold some very useful information about the variance in this matrix.